Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you Wednesday, April 12th, CPI Day, also Bank of Canada Monetary Policy Day. Um, let's get right into it. There's not a lot to do this morning. We're all waiting for the numbers. This is sort of an old-fashioned non-farms wait. Let's pull this gold chart up. Um, just because uh, we got ass-raped in gold yesterday. Um, we're looking for higher for longer. We thought this would hurt the gold price. We thought the market was long gold. Uh, but it turns out it looks like there's been some gold buying based on fears about what China is and is going on with Taiwan. So there's been this little fear demand in gold, which pushed it up, um, you know, 30 bucks from the 85 lows all the way up to 2103. Um, so just be careful with gold. We're obviously uh, out of our gold position. This could go anywhere, right? So if this is a hot one, this will come back down, obviously. But if there's going to be war in Asia, this is going to shoot. This is going to, uh, this could go to 2250. Um, so be super careful with this. Gold. Fucked. Um, let's look at dollar again. We talked about it yesterday. We knew this was going to um, pop. It did uh, pop through this horizontal already. The, low, the high overnight was 05. We're sitting here at 80. Not much to do here. Um, you can see it just ne it needed to test this. Maybe a couple of stops. Short-term guys stops above the figures who are fading 134. There's nothing to do here except for wait and plan, right? So if this if inflation comes in uh, under five, you sell dollar yen. If it comes in over, say five four, I also think you sell dollar yen, but you got to wait for one thirty four seventy. Um, the reason I think you sell dollar yen on both occasions is obviously lower rates, dollar yen can turn. Um, but higher rates, if inflation is hot, I think we're going to go risk off. So the knee jerk will be higher, um, but risk off will will come. So this is this is the plan in dollar yen, left hand side either way. Swiss yen is very interesting. Um, this has now gone 800 points since March 20th. So let's call it. I don't know, 20 trading days, 800 points. Getting stretched now, uh, 148.86, two and a half sigma. These highs here are 148.50. Uh, this high here is 148.50. These highs here are 148.86. Uh, between 50 and 80, uh, this is a strong conviction sell today. What's the other cross yen that's uh, getting all crossed up? Sterling yen, right? So we all remember this bar here, right? Um, 400 points in one day, or really in about 30 hours. 166.40 the high, down to 162.70. Um, through these highs now, stops are done. Um, this also just get stretched up here 166 70 figure so cross yen is also signaling or some cross yen is also signaling um, resistance so we're going to be very very careful with yen today uh, watching that very closely let's look at bitcoin here a lot of noise when we were up through 30,000 and everyone's like well it's going to be a false break it kind of is we're still kind of right there right um Support actually comes in at 29.2, so, you know, below 29,000, I would consider this a false break, not um, 30,000. That said, um, if you're feeling frisky today and inflation comes in hot, this this is the pony you want to you wanna ride, you want to smack this pony. Uh, liquidity is obviously an issue. Many of you don't have access to good liquidity in Bitcoin, so be careful uh, if this is your horse. But on a hot one, um, Bitcoin looks very, very vulnerable. 
what else we got out there? Let's look at Dollar Swiss. This thing is just weighted by all of the retail longs. Um, I really don't know what to do here. Obviously, 90 cents is sort of usually support. Um, we're knocking on that for no, absolutely no reason. Rates are higher. Uh, you would expect this thing around 95 cent teams with this higher for longer uh, rate deal. Are people buying Swiss francs because they're worried about military, you know, global military movements? I don't know. I do know dollar Swiss uh, is very offered. And we're just not touching this, I guess. If we see some sort of capitulation all the way down to, say, 89 centimes, so 120 points from now, we might consider buying it. We're not going to go into CPI with any kind of dollar Swiss position, but we're just pointing out that the shit is fucking offered, man. Um, what's going to turn this? I don't know. Something will. Um, just like this area here, right? I forget what this bar was on the 15th of March. Uh, but dollar Swiss went from 91.30 to 92.30, 93.30, points that day. Feels like that's an FOMC day. Um, but just pointing it out. Uh, and this obviously has an effect on Swiss yen. Um, let's go to rates or short bonds, long rates. We talked about this. I guess we're going to continue talking about it. We think the long end is going to have trouble, right? There's so many troubling things going on in America uh, regarding debt. Uh, so we are, you know, I wouldn't say comfortable. You're never really comfortable. Um, but we're short, uh, short tens at a pretty good level for now. And I mean, if this thing comes in on a four handle, we're going to get stopped out, but for now we're comfortable and we're going to go into this um, short bonds. Crude took out those lows we talked about, totally false, uh, false break. Went to 34, bang. Now we're 81.57, tippy top of this. Don't know what to do with crude. Um, is it recession or is it uh, restricting global supply? I, I really don't know. As I've mentioned a million times, if you look at my PL um, over 24 years, crude and uh, my colleagues <laughs> will chuckle when they hear this, but boons, crude and boons, um, I don't think the PL is positive. Uh, over a 24-year history, whereas most every other pair, I think, over a 24-year history is positive. Um, so why do I even talk about crude? I don't even know. Uh, so I'm shutting up now. Equities, uh, not doing anything. We're just sitting here waiting. Uh, 41.38. We have this resistance up here at 66. stretch is 4209 this looks this is a very bullish bar but this is an indecision yesterday and if we make a new low it's a bearish bar basically it's two days in a row of indecision two days in a row of nothing so I'm not really sure what to do with equities um, a few of the Twitter guys keep pointing me towards um, HYG, right? Use the canary in the coal mine for the U.S. situation is going to be high yield debt. And as soon as you see high yield debt taken in the ass, um, then the trouble trouble will be not far behind. So we're watching HYG, HYG as a uh, proxy or PTY, which is a PIMCO <coughs> junk bond fund. You know, we're watching both of these and, and using them as like, okay, is there trouble in the debt market? Uh, right now, there is not. Um, so, anyway, um, not much more to say. Obviously, we're in wait mode. Um, CPI 2.30. Bank of Canada at 4 p.m. Swiss time. We don't expect them to do anything. Uh, we talked about Aussie CAD. We might fish on a uh, sort of mean reversal or mean reversal or I don't know if you want to call it a Paris trade. One of my 
and my colleagues and friends said, oh, you do pairs trading in currency. I was like, not really. Every currency is a pairs trade. Um, but obviously he's not, uh, he's a commodities guy, he's not an FX guy. But I thought it was funny that he called it pairs trading. Um, I guess in a sense it's Aussie dollar against dollar CAD. But what I'm actually, uh, the way I look at it is, is actually just, this is Aussie CAD, which is the same but different. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, anyway, blah, 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 blah. Um, keep your head down this morning. Work some work in your journal a bit. Get some trade. Um, get some trade plans written down, and then get your mind right and get ready to execute properly at two thirty or really two thirty-five to three p.m. is going to be the action. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow.